Hello, kitties. It's time for a werewolf from Wisconsin named Kevin doing horror comic reviews. I go through a huge stack. I'm going to have to break it up into a few segments. Because I've been busy reading and not busy getting the stuff done. So we're going to try and get through as many as we can. Some might be fast. Some might be slow. Who knows? Starting out with Ashley. Ashley Williams. In the Army of Darkness versus Reanimator. Necronomicon Rising. Number four. Well, number three. And number four. Uh, if you haven't been following this run at all, you basically got Reanimator, kind of a dick, who likes to bring back people from the dead, let them roam around, cause all kinds of havoc. So somehow, he got hooked up with Ashley, Ash, <laughs> I quit saying Ashley. Uh, and basically what they're trying to do, Ash has a partner that knows a ton of stuff about the Necronomicon, but every time she starts talking about the Necronomicon, talking, letting Ash know what's going on, the Deadite show up. And at the same time, they have multiple doctors because they're jumping dimensions. Picking up doctors in other dimensions. And kind of dimension, time travel, jumping, all that's going on. And at the same time, our doctor has a version of himself that's kind of, well, kind of a little bit human. And a lot bit robotics. Just trying to keep himself alive. Using his serum. And at the same time. They want to make a new Necronomicon. Book. Out of Ash's flesh. So they're trying to get. Ash. Like make a new book. And. One has the book. And they're trying to give it to the other ones. And just. All kinds of nanigans going on with the Doctor and Ash and the Necronomicon, the Deadites, Ash's new friend. And it's, if you like Army of Darkness, I suggest checking it out. It's fun. I'm not a fan of Reanimator, and I like this run. Uh, hopefully he'll get his due in the end. Uh, this I don't really consider horror, but, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, a little leftover, leftover sheep in the throat, sheep hair. Uh, we got Barbaric Axe to Grind, number three. That ugly orc Gladius and his evil witch Boxen. Picked a fight with the wrong cursed barbarian. Revenge is a dish best served righteously. An axe has spoken his judgment. Gwen is a murderous rage in a murder is in a murderous rage. Eel has edge back, which is his sword, and Sorn's magic runs. Deeper than anyone suspects. But none of that means they're going to make it out alive. This is by Vault Comics. Uh, with Steel getting his barbaric sword back. And he's a vampire. And then we got a barbarian with an axe. That thrives off. Uh, blood and devours gets drunk from the blood of their enemies as they're slicing and dicing and sometimes he gets bad blood and magic blood and 
stuff that just isn't bud. <laughs> and we have a witch. And all kinds of things are happening in this episode. With our barbarian friend. And some interesting character that appears in this story. And this will take us right into the next book, which I cannot remember the damn name, but the cover has our witch friend holding on to Axe. So, I don't know if she's going to play a little trick to cross our barbarian friend. I don't know how it's going to affect her by holding axe because I think it, whoever controls the axe will have the curse that comes with everything. Where you have to, the curse is basically that's why the barbarian's always pissed. You can only kill bad people, and anytime someone's in need of help, the barbarian and the axe have to go off to help them. But yeah, our three characters get into trouble as usual, and you get to see what happens in the final issue of Barbaric Axe to Grind. They also have the trade paperbacks coming out this next catalog of goodies you can buy in the future. Uh, as you can find out if you listen to us talk about the previews of things coming out. Later on, there's a few different barbaric items available. So if you missed out on the first couple runs, you can easily get those trade paperbacks here. Uh, I'd say roughly in January. This is a fun one. Uh, this is the fourth fourth of four issues. Count Crowley, Amateur Midnight Monster Hunter. It just and it can't really ruin what happens, but uh. She looks like she happens to cross paths with one of my relatives. Uh, she's basically dealing with her alcoholism while trying to figure out this whole monster hunter crap still. And with the fourth issue in hand, uh, can't tell you what happens or how it turns out because I don't I do spoil stuff but I don't want to over spoil because you got to talk about stuff so you're going to spoil little pieces here and there but uh he deals with her alcoholism she's getting better with that and at the same time while she's trying to figure this out, she's dealing with the old man, and the old man's trying to help her out, and whether or not she's going to be the new main monster hunter, but he's also, at the same time, kind of a horror host. Not like my pops, Spangooly, but She's trying to be a horror host type character. And, uh, I like it, but I would have liked to have seen the story go deeper before the ending of this first run. Um, I would assume there's going to be a, another run relatively soon. <coughs> Terrible. Yeah. Check that out. Count Crowley. Amateur monster hunter there. And we got this, which is a series on Netflix, I guess. It's either Netflix or that 
Hobo Max or one of the movie TV channel type things. I think it's Netflix, but uh, they restarted the whole creep show run. And this is issue two. These are excellent. Uh, they're they fit with today and they still have the feel of the early creep show. Creep show uh shorts, the comics, the everything about creep show, it's just they've done an excellent job bringing it up to date and uh starts out you have your little mini stories. I think it's two stories per issue. It's two or three. And some other little oddball things thrown in here and there. And of course our little creepy creepy crypt keeper. And it starts out with the Gorgomora tree. Which is basically a uh, tree in the backyard that's just alive that's uh, causing all kinds of issues and problems for a girl that lives in this home and she does what she has to to deal with the events at hand and it's just it's a interesting and story that you should definitely check then we got creator's rights where this story has a character created by an artist writer and that character kind of comes to life in a way and Helps become part of his maker. Kind of a little creepy cartoon Frankenstein style story. Then uh, you got your creep corner in the back with all the write ins, all the fans. And then in the back of this one, they had a. Uh, I thought it was a. Are you going to tell me the name? I can't find the name of it. It's a teaser, I believe. Yeah, it's a teaser for this Chroma book. It looks prehistoric dino egg creature type layout. It's like basically they found a giant egg or or hunted a giant egg and it's from this beast that they want to have hatch and slaughter I, I may or may not check it out in the future we'll just see what happens along the way and then we got Crypt of Shadows with the Morbius cover this had a Another set of stories with their own style Crypt Keeper, which is more vampire. Vampire in his castle, that type of layout. Trying to play another person, trying to get Spengoolie's job. But there's a variety of stories in this one that were... Mostly interesting, starting out with, uh, what is the name for these? <laughs> this one doesn't have a name. I see, the first one is called the, called, called the Crypt of Shadows, I guess. And here we have a person that's trying to get to a costume party dressed up like a little fox wolf thing 
And on her way to the party, she decides to help somebody out. And when she helps them out, some things happen along the way. We get a a bloodline story from Danny, Lore, Karen, S. Darbo, and Chris Peter. I don't know if that's going to go into the Blade bloodline story basis. I'm not sure. But then our next story is Werewolf by Moon Knight. Where we get some people that are coming to a Halloween costume style party and are expected to come to a house and uh, when they do they just happen to meet another relative of mine who's a little pissed off a little bit cranky and uh Moon Knight just happens to pop into the venue and uh, you'll have to read it. Happens. And then we go to a Morbius story. I don't have these names where I need them. I keep going back to the beginning for the names. And down came the rain, I guess. Is the next one. This one just so happens to have... Or it's called Skin Crawl. That makes way more sense. He's not in order. Am I just reading off the wrong names? <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. This one's called Skin Crawl. And it's got Morbius. Or... Uh, friendly little vampire that tried to cure himself and ended up turning himself into an even worse person at times. And it so happens to have some little bit of little bitty bugs that happened to be part of the story and there's a lot of bugs that just start to come and cause all kinds of problems with Morbius and change him and you'll have to read the story more from it. Uh, Down Came the Rain. This story Basically, Spider-Man gets to live up to his name again. <laughs> uh, uh, every time that poor bastard turns into a spider-human type character, he is just one ugly cuss. I see Spidey as a real spider. There's a fun story for you. And then, we got Endless Slaughter in the Infinite Swamp. This, we got X-23 and Man-Thing, two indestructible beings meeting in the swamp and this is a battle of a lifetime. I mean, a battle of a lifetime. If uh, you like those characters, this is an interesting story. Very interesting about beings that just can't be destroyed. Watching them battle each other out endlessly. Yeah. I, that was a lot of fun. I love it. It's a nice thick book. So it's definitely worth it. It's a nice long read. Lots of great covers. Of course, I got the Morbius one. But Trip to Shadows. It's by Marvel Comics. Lots of fun. Good Halloween reads this year.
And this is something we jumped on. It's because we like the scary carnival style things. We love Zombillennium. It felt like it. It felt like kind of a cross between Zombillennium and what is the... One with the, uh, it's got the shaky pizza style kids, uh, arcade, birthday party pizzeria, scary creatures, uh, robotic creatures that come to life and kill everybody. That's that storyline. Those two crossed over would give you this. And in here, we're learning that someone's got to come up with a new ride for the park. The park is struggling. We have the two children. The daughter's name is Hel Halloween. And uh, I forget the son's name. His is, his is normal, though. It's not based off a Halloween theme like his daughter is. But they're trying to get their dad's park back up to par, get clientele coming in again. And while they do that, we get to meet some new workers at the park and get to see how they're treat treated. And... and Got to come up with a new fun, scary ride. And I think his daughter, the son's daughter, is uh, around the park a lot, enjoying things, getting things set up. And I think she is going to end up being the one that's going to make the... make the big ride and stuff, the new scary ride, and there's going to be something related to her in that, I think. But I could be wrong. Uh, a little sinew in my tooth. Uh, yeah, I just... I like it, but I enjoyed Zombie any more. This one's a little bit slow on the take. We are only two issues in. And this is by Image Comics. They usually do good with their independence. But we will see what happens. Comes out of it. All right. I think that's good for today. I'm going to end this one here and I'll probably make another one because I got a lot of comics to get through yet. So I've been doing lots of reading. Because I've been busy doing things. Might as well take a comic with you when you're out and about. Give you something to do. Kill some time. But yeah. That was fun. Gotta love the horror comics. They're just... Coming out left and right. Everybody's making them. There's always new creatures. And always gonna repeat off the old ones. So... Check it out. Keep on under the call of MS. Video versions, audio versions, and who knows what the hell else is going to come out in the future. But we'll see. We'll try something. So. Good. I'll talk to you again soon.